This morning, our reflection is entitled Revival. Revival. That's the, uh, the topic of our message today. And um, before we actually turn to the scriptures, allow me to just pray with you. Father in heaven, the moment has come for you to be lifted up. We want to claim the promise that you yourself, Jesus, said that if you are lifted up, you are going to draw all, all men unto you. So during these uh, few moments, we pray, Lord, that you may indeed be lifted up so that uh, everyone may not see the mouthpiece, but that they may see you, uh, the word of life. Uh, thank you for tabernacling with us today uh, through the presence of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to invite you to turn to your Bibles to the very last book of the Bible, the very last book of the Bible, that's the Revelation. And we are going to look at uh, chapter 3 of Revelation. I want us to just uh, meditate on the uh, six verses of chapter, uh, chapter 3, the first six verses. And I'm going to read it uh, in your hearing here. Revelation chapter 3. I'm giving you time to get there. Please, let's get there together. Revelation chapter 3. And I am going to read from verses 1 uh, through verse 6. Uh, and I'm reading. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write... These things say he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, and hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Verse 4. You have a few names even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I know your works, the Bible says, that you have a reputation, you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Because we have a name and a reputation that we are alive and yet are dead, we need a revival. We do need a revival. Because without a revival, we are nothing. Without a revival, nothing is possible. Without a revival, God's word that we hear from week to week, from Sabbath to Sabbath, will fall on deaf ears and dead ears. Without a revival, we become hypercritical of everything, and we also become hypocritical. Without a revival, without a revival, 
we may see but not see we may hear but not hear you see without a revival we may seem to know while in actuality we do not know for me we may always be learning and not coming to the knowledge of the truth the bible says we need a revival because without a revival what we seem to be to people is actually not so we need a revival we need a revival because without it we trust no one because we cannot be trusted by anyone without a revival or oh church we are lost in the house like that woman's coin and the broom struggles to reach us but in vain we need a revival for without a revival we may brag and swim in pride like Nebuchadnezzar before he was ejected from his throne and was sentenced to grazing with the animals for seven years. We need a revival because without a revival we may sit like disobedient Jonah going to Tarshish against God's will because we have a name because we have a reputation that we are alive but dead we need a revival so Lucy we need a revival because without a revival we are like King Agrippa who when the word of God was preached to him became almost persuaded to surrender to God but he failed to altogether surrender his life to God you see dear friends we need a revival because without a revival we become like Judas who walked with Jesus ate with Jesus for more than three years, and yet his heart was hardened, refusing to be converted. We need a revival because without it, we can be like Judas who was willing to sell Jesus for 30 shillings of silver. Because we have a name and a reputation that we are alive, yet we are dead, like the church of Sardis, we need a revival. Because without a revival, <laughs> we behave like Pilate, who was wishy-washy, with no backbone of his own, to do the right thing and to release Jesus, the innocent Jesus. We need a revival because without it, we are loose cannons and become too dangerous, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We need a revival, my dear friends, because without a revival, we resort to scheming and manipulating, manipulating and being manipulated to fulfill godless agendas. We need a revival, so Lucy, because without a revival, we become like the tribes of Gad and Reuben who settled for less than the promised land and camped on this other side of the Jordan. Oh, dear friends, we need a revival. We do. We do need a revival because without it, we are like leprous individuals who lose their toes and lose their fingers without feeling 
uh, their loss. We need a revival. I need a revival. We need a revival. Because without a revival, we generate vibes and reputations of being alive, yet we are actually dead. We need a revival. We do. Because without a revival, we are just like beasts born but to be slaughtered. We need a revival because without it, we become cold statistics among the 8 billion residents of this planet. We need, we need a revival. Because without a revival, we are like pigs that are washed clean, but soon go back to wallow in the mud. We are like dogs which are quick to go back to eat their own vomit. We need a revival. Because without a revival, we become Luciferian. The devil himself, who often mingles with people of God as if coming to worship God, but remains devilish, unrepentant, and rebellious. We need a revival because without a revival, we are like Satan, who in spite of being persistently rebuked by God, remains stubborn and resilient. Oh, my dear friends, we need a revival because without a revival, we are like sons of Eli, who became too familiar with divine things. And that drove God to anger. We need a revival. Because without it, we are like Esau, who was quick to sell his birthright for a bowl of soup. We need, we need, we need a revival. Because without it, we do not care when sinners are dropping dead without Christ on our right and on our left. We need a revival because without it we are quick to mix priorities, measuring on minors and minoring on majors. We need a revival because without a revival we fool some people some of the time, forgetting we cannot fool all people all the time. We need a revival. Oh, church, we need a revival. Because without a revival, we are dead, carrying a reputation of being alive. We need a revival because without it, we squander and miss opportunities to be loving, to be caring, to be Christ-like. We need a revival, so Lucy Church, we do need a revival because without it, we are like the prodigal son bent on leaving home to squander his substance on riotous living. Because we have a name, we have a reputation to be alive, and yet we are dead like the church of Sardis. We need, desperately, urgently, need a revival because without it, we drift like a sheep without a sail, aimlessly wandering in futility. We need revival because without revival, we senselessly follow the crowd wherever the crowd may lead us. Oh, we need a revival. We need a revival because without a revival, we are robbed into the broad way that leads to destruction, using drugs, living loosely and ruining our lives. We need, we need a revival. Because without a revival, we overpromise and underdeliver, not realizing that our lies will catch up with us very, very soon. We need a revival because without a revival, we are like clouds without rain, raising people's hopes for nothing. 
We need a revival, dear friends. I need a revival. Because without a revival, I am like an intermittent stream in the desert that cannot be depended upon. Oh, dear friends, we need, we need a revival because without a revival, we have become lovers of ourselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, headstrong, strong-willed, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having only a form, a form of religion and godliness, but denying uh, the power thereof. That's from 2 Timothy uh, 3 verses 2 to verse 5. Because we have a name, because we have a reputation of being alive, and yet we are dead, we need a revival. We do need a revival. And this morning, before I sit down, I'm just inviting somebody who is saying, look, 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 I don't want to carry a reputation of being alive when I'm actually spiritually dead. I need a revival. I'm the first one, I need it. I need a revival. Do I have somebody who resonates with uh, this message for this morning, who is saying, Lord, I'm tired of playing games. I don't want to carry a reputation of being alive when I am actually dead. I need a revival. If this message spoke to your heart this morning, if you need a revival like I do, as we start this year, 2023, in this church, on this, uh, on this campus community, academic community, and you are saying, Lord, please give me a revival. I don't want to, to be dead. I want to be alive so that as I am alive in Jesus, his character will be fully reproduced in my life. Is there somebody who's willing to stand with me to say, Lord, I need a revival. I do need a revival. Not yesterday, but now. Not tomorrow, but now. I need a revival. And I'm serious about it. Please, can you come and join me in the podium here? Please come to the front. We want to pray. We want to pray for a revival. Please come. We're going to wait for you. Please come to the front. Those who have stood up, please come. And those who want to join them, please come to the front. We are serious about a revival. We are tired of playing games. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of the universe, we are so grateful that your word, your word, has reached us this morning, inviting us to be revived. Lord, we are tired. 
We are tired of playing games. We are tired of pretending to be alive when we are actually dead. We need a revival. Spark that revival in our hearts, even as we have stood up this afternoon to surrender our lives fully to you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, thank you for starting that revival with us. May this thing not be a dry formality, a dry routine that we do Sabbath after Sabbath. Stand up, commit, go back. Oh Lord, cause us to move forward. As a church, as a church, a revived church, we will be on fire for you. Whenever we meet, wherever we meet, we will have you forefront in our conversations. We will have you on our lips as we pray for one another, encourage one another. Oh Lord, we need a revival. Because when that revival starts with us, it is going to ripple. It will ripple outside this fence to touch our neighbors in this community and will spread to the furthermost parts of this world. Lord, we need a revival. Thank you for giving us a revival this morning. We don't want to go back where we were. It cannot be business as usual. Challenge us to be alive for you, to represent you fully, to have no dichotomy between who we are during the weekend on Sabbath and what we are during the week. Help us, Lord, to carry our religion, our Christianity, our revival to every nook and cranny of our lives. Oh, thank you for the revival. Thank you for the revival. Spark this revival at Solusi Church. May we be a different church. A church that's serious about salvation, the salvation of our fellow man, the salvation of our children, the salvation of ourselves. Thank you for the revival. Because when we are alive, we will be sensitive to the needs of others. We will be sensitive to encourage one another. We will be sensitive not to be selfish, but selfless. We will be willing to die for one another. Oh, give us that kind, that quality, that caliber of a revival. That's what we are asking for. We are not settling for anything less. A revival. We don't want to carry a name, a reputation of being alive, while in actuality we are dead and rotting spiritually. Oh, your children have stood up, Lord. They need that revival. I do, I do. I do need that revival. Oh Lord, thank you for giving us the revival. This Sabbath is special because we are revived. We are going out of this church, not just carrying a name. We are going out fully alive for Jesus. Thank you for blessing us to that end. Because we know, we know Jesus, when that happens, you have no reason to linger anymore in heaven. Your character will be fully reproduced in us and you will come and take us home. We cannot wait for that day, O oh Lord, when you shall break the eastern sky. When their names are called up yonder, when the roll is called, O oh Lord, we want our names to be there. Thank you so much for blessing us because we have prayed these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please take your seats.